Good morning. I'm Steve Raleigh, and I'm here once again to share with you a devotional as uh, part of this Chapel Hill's program to reach out through social media and through uh, technology in various ways to uh, when we can't worship together. And this morning, I want to bring a topic to you that's difficult to talk about. It's Satan and his demons. And specifically, where is Satan or where is the devil in this pandemic? Now, I know that uh, many people don't want to think about Satan. They don't want to think about uh, the demons or anything because it's, uh, first of all, we believe that Jesus defeated Satan in his de through his death on the cross and through his resurrection, and yes, he did. But th did that mean that Satan just went away? Did he go back to hell and has left us alone for 2,000 years? I don't think so. No, we're told that he still roams the earth looking for someone to devour. And uh, I believe, and I've learned over the years, that, that uh, uh, Satan is behind much of the sin that happens in this world. Now, I'm not saying that Satan causes us to sin. Man has a free will. Man uh, is free to do as he chooses. But Satan tempts us. Satan gets in our head and convinces us to do things that we maybe wouldn't have done without his temptation, without his lies, without his convincing us that this is something that we want or that will make us happy or, or make us uh, feel better. And we don't have to look any farther than uh, in first chapter of Genesis with Adam and Eve. Who tempted Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree? It was Satan. He was the one that convinced them that if they would only eat of this, that they would be like God. And they did. They believed him. And they ate. And, of course, sin came into this world and has been here ever since. And uh, Satan continues to tempt us. We even see in Scripture in Matthew's Gospel that Satan tempted Jesus Christ himself. So if he did that, if he tempted uh, even Jesus, he's certainly not going to leave you and me alone. And I believe he does his best work in our heads. He he works through our thoughts. He places thoughts in our heads that that sound attractive to us, that make make us think this is something that we want, and we we sin because of it. So Satan is alive and well. Satan is active in this world, and. Um, uh, in talking about Satan and looking to Scripture, nowhere in Scripture is uh, Satan more obvious and more uh, greater at work than in uh, the book of Job. We see that uh, Satan convinced God to allow him, allow Satan to wreak havoc in Job's life, to destroy and kill all of his herds and all of his, uh, his shepherds and all of his uh, herdsmen and even his children. And Satan, or Job, was left with nothing through this. But we're told that uh, that through this, that uh, uh, Job continued to trust. He said, "Naked I came from my mother's womb; naked I'll return to the womb of the earth." God gives, God takes. God's name be ever blessed. Not once through all of this did Job sin. Not once did he blame God. So God was at work, and God was outsmarting Satan. He knew that uh, through Job that he would do a great work, and through the book of Job that's been read by millions, uh, many, many people have been inspired to hang in there, to not give up, and to continue to, to trust and believe in God. Um, Many of you know that I'm an associate chaplain at the jail and meet with uh, many inmates there. And uh, this topic of nakedness kind of applies here. The, the prisoners are naked uh, in the sense of being having been stripped of everything that they have. They've lost everything. Now, granted, I know that um, uh, it was through poor choices that most of them made, but still it, their circumstances are, are desperate and they, they, they have lost everything. Thing. And uh, God works in their lives and helps them to learn to trust. This word trust is mentioned in the Bible more than 250 times, which is amazing to think that God tells us that even though we don't understand what's going on, we are to trust in him. And uh, uh, we're told in the book of James, again referring to Job, it says, As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. So 
We see that Job never blamed God, that his hope was in heaven, and that his faithfulness uh, carried him through a, a terrible, terrible suffering. And we're, we're called to do the same thing. We're called to be faithful and to, uh, to be faithful to Christ and, and not allow our circumstances to in, influence or destroy our faith. It says that faithfulness happens when we choose to see the bigger picture of our Father's heart's desire for what is best for us. No loss is wasted in the Lord's loving ways. The, uh, we, I've, through social media, I've heard the song many times lately, It Is Well With My Soul by Horatio Spafford. I don't know if any of you know, many of you probably do, the, the story behind this song. Horatio Spafford was a, a wealthy man like Job who lost all of his children. They all died. And in his sorrow, in his grief, he sat down and he penned the words to It Is Well With My Soul. And one of the verses from this uh, song reads, Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his blood for my soul. So God is always at work in our lives. He never stops working, and we see that he is at work sometimes the most when times are at, the, at its worst, when it, we're in the toughest times, because that's when we turn to God, because we're desperate, we're, we're, uh, we're running out of hope, we've lost our, uh, we've lost our hope, and we turn to, uh, naturally, as believers, we turn to the Lord and just seek his help to get us through the difficult times. And we're told, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. So, in closing, I just pray that we all can learn through this to, to trust and to believe and just uh, allow the Lord to to give us the security of knowing that he's in charge, that he's not abandoned us, he's not given up on us, and that we, we will, he will see us through this. And we're already seeing good things that have come out of this, of, of this suffering. Families uh, have come together to, to spend quality time with each other. Uh, people are reaching out through social media to, to touch others' lives and to spare, share spiritual thoughts and readings and sayings and, and other good things that are happening through this. And we just we just believe that uh, even though this is a tough time, the Lord will see us through this and he will bring about good things. Let us pray. Lord, we just come to you today. We just thank you for blessing us, for loving us, for not giving up on us. And we just truly trust and believe that through this calamity, through this difficult situation, that you will show us your power, show us your glory, and, and carry us through this time. So we just thank you for blessing us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for not giving up on us. And we just thank you for uh, the good that will come through this, this difficult situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.